So hey guys, it's me Charlie, and this is my uh, nine week video on testosterone. I just woke up, <laughs> uh, it's like 11 o'clock on Friday, um, so I was beat yesterday. I uh, made an, like an entire ceramic teapot in my ceramics class, it's like that big, and I sculpted like little feet for it, like literal feet, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, here, it, for changes or whatnot, I, um, obviously my voice sounds a little bit deeper, um, and I, I think that I, like, grow facial hair faster. It's still really, really thin, but, like, usually I could go about four or five days without having to shave, um, and, like, still getting a tiny bit of prickle, but I've been, like, two or three days without shaving, and, like, now I'm just, like, with the peach fuzz. Um, so the changes, I feel like my muscles are a lot denser, like, I don't know if you can really see that too well, but, like, I have a lot more definition, and, like, it's a lot more intense all in here, so, um, and I'm getting, I'm getting more hair, like, everywhere, uh, I've noticed, <laughs> Jack pointed out to me the other day that my back <laughs> is, like, my, the bot like, the small of my back, is, uh, like, the hair is getting darker, <laughs> uh, it just kind of sucks, but whatever, and, uh, my legs are getting a lot hairier, like, well, they've always been crazy hairy, but I mean, like, they're, they're getting black hairy, um, that's, like, I've, like I said, I've always been really hairy, but a lot of the hair that I do have is just turning a lot darker, um, and a tiny bit denser in some areas, um, as for other things, I've noticed, like, I, I remember when I, um, was first coming out or whatever, and, like, thinking about testosterone, um, reading things about how people would have muscle soreness when they work out, like, it feels like their muscles are trying to bust out of their body, um, and it's true, like, when I, uh, even when I walk a long distance, my, my calf muscles, like, it feels like someone's trying to take, um, I don't know, plastic or rubber or something and pull it over, like, I don't know like, something way too large for it, if it makes any sense, like, it feels like my skin is being stretched over my muscle, it really, really hurts, and it gets, like, really, really tight, so I don't know, um, just thought it was really interesting, um, what else, oh, uh, I, like I said in my previous videos, you saw me in San Diego, um, it was kind of funny to talk to my mom about, like, different things, uh, because this is my first time going back from being on testosterone, and it was kind of more, being, me being trans was kind of more talked about, um, because I guess it might have been, like, a little more prevalent, but the way my mom sees it, she's always said that, or not always, but she's said since, like, she started to really, like, accept it, uh, about me, um, about me being a guy, and she said that, uh, that it's, it doesn't surprise her, really, um, and all the old photos that she has of me just kind of looks like I'm a dude in drag. <laughs> Which is, I don't know, I think it's kind of funny. Um, and apparently, when, like, when she tells family, friends, or whatnot, they always say that, like, like, especially the ones who knew me pretty well, they always say that, like, it's not a surprise and that I've always kind of been a guy either way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's kind of cool. I've gotten a really good, uh, feedback from my family with the, with starting tea and everything. Um, my sister is actually going really well with it, which is surprising because of her religious affiliation. Um, I don't know. I'm not used to having positive feedback from religious groups or whatever, or religious people, um, when it comes to things that are outside of the norm, I guess. So, um, what else? Uh, I haven't really told my dad anything, my biological dad, which is a whole other issue. Uh, my mom and my, my, I have a, two parents, my mom and my stepdad, and a stepsister. And my dad, I haven't seen since, um, two years ago Halloween, or, like, before Halloween. Uh, we never really had that great of a relationship anyway. Um... So, I, I don't know, I just, he was, he was kind of raised, like, a redneck type white trash family, although he was, like, pretty decently liberal, he was pretty racist, though, because of his upbringing, and, um, 
he was pretty uh, um, homophobic as well. Like, when I first came out, I came out as a lesbian. Or bi, I should say, then a lesbian. And he was completely decent about it. Um, like, he, he's one of those guys that says, like, oh, you know, all those faggots and freaking, like, just fudge packers type crap, you know. And if he has a gay friend, he's totally cool with them. I, I don't, it's really weird. Um, and so, like I said, he was cool with me being gay or whatever, and then I, he was always treating me as, like, his little girl or whatever, and, like, always seeing me as that, and it would be really difficult for me to tell him otherwise, and I, for me not seeing him for two years, um, I've just never been able to tell him that I'm trans, I've just, I'm sure he would be decent with it, but it would be, it would just be so, like, traumatic for him because of all the shit that he's been through, um, he, uh, he's currently in prison right now, actually, because of certain issues, <laughs> um, he's one of those guys that just, everything happens to him, and whether he brings it upon himself or not, that's just how it goes, um, he, uh, he's been on, oh, sorry, the ferret just pooped, he's been on, uh, numerous, numerous drug addict, like, drug addictions and alcoholism and everything, and I've tried to help him through all of it, but, you know, what, at some point you just kind of have to say, screw it, you just need the person out of your life, so that's kind of where I am now, um, of course I'm gonna have that really bad pain in me that I'm not able to have the father that, or the typical father that people are usually able to have, um, so, yeah, sorry for the sad update, just, I figured I've never talked about him, but he still plays a pretty big part of my life, whether he's in it or not, um, and yeah, it really hurts me that I can't say anything to him about this, because if I do see him, whenever he gets out of prison, if he does get out of prison, he, I want to be a completely different person, he's, the last he saw me, I had, like, I don't know, you know, you remember the emo cat where it's kind of like long in the front and short in the back. I had like a grown out version of that, um, bright red. Um, yeah, he hasn't seen any of this. So, and I would send him a letter and saying like, yeah, by the way, I'm a dude, you know. But he can't read, <laughs> and I'm sure someone else will be, be able to read it for him. But I, I don't know. I wouldn't. I'd feel like I'd be embarrassing him. So. Yep. Um. So, yeah, well, my other little thing is my parents divorced when I was three, so he's been in and out of my life pretty much my, the whole time. Um, he, uh, if anyone knows about psychology, he has borderline personality disorder. It's like, the best way to explain it is where they act, like, they have the psychological development of a two-year-old, where you say that you're gonna, you say that, um... You promise them something, or no, not promise them. They ask for ask you for something, and you say no, and they'll throw a complete tantrum. But they have the um, the vocabulary and the street smarts of an adult, so they know exactly how to argue the wrong way to get you to do whatever you, they want you to do. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any questions or anything, or want me to touch on other certain topics, I'm totally cool talking about. This is a, definitely a form of therapy for me. So, yeah, talk to you guys later, and I hope you have a great rest of the weekend, and peace out.